In this Premiere Pro tutorial, we're going to take a shot that looks like this and turn it into a shot that looks like this. If you're trying to make a shot look very soft, but you don't have a soft filter, or you don't have a pair of pantyhose to stretch across the lens, or any of number of other things, there's a very quick and easy way you can create a soft look inside of Adobe Premiere, or really any nonlinear edit system that you have available to you. First of all, a little bit of news up front. This shot was shot on the Canon EOS R. It was shot in the Canon log mode, so it's a form of RAW. You can see that in the uh, pre-treated image that the image is very flat, uh, but after going into Lumetri and applying a bunch of uh, correction, we got a clip that looks like this, which I'm happy with in this case. So all the subsequent clips we'll be looking at in this project have already had the Lumetri color effect applied, some color correction applied, so we get a look that we're happy with. In fact, I could probably, if I wanted to, bring the whites down just a little bit more and still be okay with how this project looks. Now, here's the secret. the What happens when your video blooms or your film blooms is there's an actual kind of a glow that happens on all the highlights or on all the bright areas of your image. An easy way to do this is to simply duplicate this layer, and I'm going to do this by holding down the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac, clicking on this clip, and then dragging straight up to create a duplicate of this clip on the track two. Now I'm going to be working with track two, and the first thing I'm going to do is go over to my effects window and look for a blur filter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use fast blur, and I'm just going to apply it to this layer. And if we go back over to the effect controls for this clip, I'm going to crank the blurriness up to 100. That's, that's where I'm going to start. And you can see we've kind of blurred out this entire screen. That's the, that's the part of the shot that is going to create the glow for our image. And you can tell that the areas that are really bright have a really uh, big pattern. And areas that are dark, while they're still okay, they still have a little bit of bloom to them. Now, here is where the trick comes in. Over in your opacity, or depending on your nonlinear edit system, wherever you can put a blend mode in, but on Premiere, it can be found under the opacity settings for the clip. I'm going to change this blend mode from normal to screen. And look at how that image suddenly lights up. It's super, super soft. It's super, super bright. Maybe too bright. Maybe there's too much bloom. Maybe you don't want that much glow on your image. Perfectly fine. I'm just going to take the opacity level for this, and I'm just going to bring it down until it's right around the area that I want. And maybe here, maybe 33%, maybe 40%. Maybe that looks good for you. So here is the before the bloom has been added, before the, the screen has been added, before the blend mode has been changed to screen, and this is after. And here is the layer. Here's how this video clip looked before. We applied this technique and then after. And I like that because it gives it a very nice kind of dreamy feel to your shot. And that's really when someone is putting a softening filter in front of the lens. That's kind of what you're doing. You're creating a dreamy type appearance. So the question is, this is a nice picture with a lot of pinks and a lot of whites and a lot of good contrast in the image. Does this work for every image? Let's find out. Here is one that is a little bit darker. In this shot, we have a green plant sitting in the shade of a porch. So let's see if we can replicate and get the same kind of effect. So again, I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt key. I'm going to click and drag straight up. On this duplicate layer, I'm going to apply the Fast Blur. And again, I'm going to start at 100, although you could make this go even higher if you wanted. You could have this go up to... 300 pixels if you wanted to create a really blurry image, but let's start with 100 and go from there. Then under the opacity controls, we are going to change this to screen. We certainly get a blurry effect, and again, we can 
drop this down. Let's take this one down to 50. We still get a glow in this and it certainly looks a lot softer. Again, here is the before and here's the after. Let's crank this uh, blur value up to 300. Well, I think we start to hit a bit of diminishing return if we crank it up too high. What happens if we just crank this down to 50 instead of 100? Again, here's the before, here's the after. Hmm, 50 doesn't look too bad. How low can we go? 20? Now, now we're starting to lose, whoops. Clicked the wrong uh, option there. At 20, we really are not seeing, we're seeing a little bit of bloom, a little bit of softness on the image but we don't get that glow. So again, one of the nice things about this effect is you can dial it in to your taste. So if you like this back at 100 with 30% uh, or 40% opacity, you can do that. Again, the before and after. Let's take a look at two more examples here before we end this. Here's one with a boy sitting on a porch and it's clear that the background is completely blown out. It's unfortunate, right? You've got someone sitting in a dark area, we're exposing for the skin, and yet in the background there's a big white fence and it's a bright sunny day and it's blown out. How does this look? Well again, pull down the option key, click and drag, put it up there, let's put the fast blur effect on here, crank that up to 100, change this opacity to screen, and then dial it into taste. Well, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, you're already blown out in this background, but notice how, especially in the highlight areas on the face, we get a lot of smoothing on the face. It seems to have a nice little glow around it. The hair starts to get a little bit of glow going on as well. Again, before and after. Doesn't look too bad. One more. I went ahead and we moved to a different portion of the yard. Still a white fence behind but we adjusted our exposure just a bit and the sun is now a little bit more of a rim light so the fence isn't blown out, the siding isn't overexposed, the really only bright part is the book that, that uh, he is reading. So we'll just go ahead and repeat this process. I'm going to crank this up to 100. Screen. At 100, that's, 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 that really is a little bit too much. Let's see, I, I want just a little bit of softness here. Maybe this time I'll just go down to 30. Get that book to really kind of glow in this shot. We'll play a little bit of this. Yeah, that looks okay. It looks really soft. And it, But again, if you want this to really glow and you're really trying to create a dreamy uh, scene where this boy is having a, a dream about uh, something going on, Go ahead and crank that up really high if you like. You know, picture somebody showing up in a white suit and they're all aglow. So there you go. It's a really simple trick. It's been around forever. And again, if you're trying to create a bloom or a glow effect on your video, the easy way is to duplicate it onto another layer, blur that layer, and then apply the screen transfer mode and adjust your opacity to taste. I hope you found that informative. If you have any questions, please ask.